Hiya folks, this was the world's worst lawnmower that I found in the bushes over two years ago. I've left it outside all that time. Let's see if we can get it running. I don't know what the state it's gonna be in, but let's have a look at it anyway. See you in a minute. Well, here it is. As you remember, if, if you did see the video over two years ago, 2017 in August, I dug this out of the bushes and it had a big rusty hole in there. It was all rusted along here. A big hole around the other side we had to cut in and uh, put some other metal in, but uh, let's see how it's fed. It's been left outside. It's not done any work whatsoever. I just left it and again, it's it's gone to rack and ruin again. So let's just have a little quick look over it. Well, I don't know whether you remember, but we, we cut a big hole in the front there because it was all rusted out and um, I actually refilled that. Well that's held up pretty well uh, and also around here as well. And I painted the cover, I didn't do anything more than just paint it, I'll just give it a slight rub down but uh, as you can see the rust is starting to come through again on that. These handles are in really poor condition but after being out for two years they've held up pretty well. There is signs of rust there still there. I mean I'm doing this just to give you an idea of after I restore these lawnmowers or paint, repaint them and do the decks up, what you can expect for longevity for um, something if you do repair it. As I said, this was the worst lawnmower that I possibly had. Let's have a little, little look underneath. Well, that's all pretty much held up as what it should be because uh, I, I resealed and painted that. The blade's still on there, as you can see. The blade's done no work whatsoever. Nothing's been used, as you can see. So all in all, we have, by doing the work to it, we did extend its life. So uh, I don't know whether this is going to start. As I say, I've not even had the pool called, pulled over. So uh, we'll put some petrol in it or some fuel and uh, we'll see if we can get this thing running. I don't know whether it's got, oh, I can't even undo that. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, here we go. Let's have a look. I don't know whether it, there would have been a little bit of fuel in it, but uh, that's totally dried out by the looks of it. Yeah, there's a little bit of rust on the bottom of the tank and the primer bulb is a bit stiff. This is a reproduction one, obviously, so uh, I'm going to take a chance. I'm hoping that there was no fuel left in the bowl. As I say, it looks like everything's evaporated off, but uh, we'll try and put some fresh fuel in it. I've not even pulled started it. You're going to see it fresh with me, so let me get some fuel and we'll put that in. Now, I'm not holding that much hope for this, as I say, but uh, we'll give it a go anyway. Let's get some of this in there. I won't overfill it because the chances are it's not going to be used again. <laughs> it's just a test. Now, as you can see, that's why I lack of these decks because normally if you spill petrol all over them like that, it starts to peel off. But this has got a 2K lacquer on this, so that's why it's not peeling off. Right, let's give it a prime. Cool, that's very slow. It's quite cold out here at the moment. It's probably about 6 degrees centigrade. I can't hear nothing filling up. I'm just going to take the top off just to see if it's squirting fuel in. I'll just take the air filter off. I can't remember if I put a new one in here or just clean the old one. It was a long time ago. No, I'll just clean the old one. Right, let's have a look there. Right, we've got nothing coming through there at the moment, which I don't know why that is. As you can see, I'm thinking that maybe the uh, filter on the bottom of the fuel tank might be blocked so I might quickly just whip that out just to undo the fuel tank away from the body right just undo this one and hopefully we should be able to drop the carb straight off and then I can unbolt it if I remember rightly I did put a new car, uh, diaphragm and gasket in here so you just pull that back off of there very stiff and just undo it Switch the linkage off. Must remember to put that little bracket back in. Right, let's just take this top off. Just undo these screws. All right, okay. We gently lift this off. Get that old diaphragm and gasket. All right, okay. And don't forget this. This was a uh, pretty new, or this was all new. The filter actually looks okay. I'm surprised with that. I thought that would be sucking up fuel. Yeah, look, that means the um, 
possibly the this is might have perished so I might have to dig that out and uh, see if that's broken I'll see if I've got another bulb and then I'll get back to you in a second all right okay so this shouldn't be worn at all but uh, I'll just wipe that off and well it's blowing through so by blowing that I can hear the air coming through so that's all right it's like this hasn't got enough pressure to suck through so I'm going to change this primer bulb here just give us a second right just got a little screwdriver here just to try and remove this primer bulb because this could be the problem you see these pattern bulbs they don't hold up very well so it could be that it's not sealing properly I'll just remove this ring and this is typical of things that you can find when you do use pattern parts on lawnmowers and then leave them sitting and uh, you could come across this sort of problem right there's the outer cover off look right okay then I found this uh, <clears throat> red one here I'm gonna put this one in see how this goes it's a lot softer as you can probably see there we go look how soft that one is look and what I like to do is to put them on first over that little spout that sticks up that way you know at least it's seated in there and then push this on afterwards and I tend to use a socket let me go and get a socket to push that on so I mean I tend to find a 17 mil socket goes sits on there just nicely and then you can just sort of press that in hopefully and you've got to hear it click sometimes they're a bit of a devil you may need a bit of extra persuasion that's it all right that one's in let's have a little press of that can you hear that can you hear that can't we right let's put that back on there I'm pretty confident, I'm not even going to check it, I'm just going to bolt it straight down, so let me do that and I'll be with you in a second. Right, okay, that's that. Now this is the big test. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I think you'll see, look, that's pushing petrol through, isn't it? So yeah, primer bulb issue, that's all it was. That's cheap pattern parts for you, let's put that back on there. Just whack that back in there and push that back on there like that it's so simple to, to put these ones back on that's why i say if you're going to repair lawnmowers or you want to make a bit of money doing this give yourself a fighting chance and pick a briggs and stratton classic engine lawnmower like this for example and you won't go far wrong because they are really when they've been standing these are the sort of problems you get it's uh, mostly carb problems and i'm sure you'll agree that i'm sure someone else if they didn't know anything about lawnmowers if they had this issue after trying to start the lawnmower, they would probably just give up. We'll get that screw in there. I'll give it a few primes now just to push some petrol through, as you can probably see there. Make sure that linkage is all working correctly. All right, okay. Let's try and give this a start after two years sat outside again after it was sat outside for five years in the bushes. Right. Let's put it down there. There you go. Oh. Let's have a go, eh? Well, there you go, it did run. It's hunting. I'm not too worried about that little knocking noise you can probably hear, that's only because it's going to cut out all the time. So um, when it's actually running up to speed, it actually runs, it sounds quite nice. So it just needs a new diaphragm and gasket, which was one of the things that I did replace two years ago when I done this. But as you can see, over two years, don't forget these were pattern parts I put in this. So the two pattern parts I did fit to the carburetor, one was the uh, diaphragm and gasket, and one was the, um, the primer bulb which has already changed i'm sure if i change the, the uh, gasket and diaphragm on that and put a brand new one in 
again this will be running perfectly again so right let's take this off again and what happens is in fact it's happened here i can see it now look you see the wrinkled up diaphragm and uh it's probably because it's old and it's knackered two years old pattern diaphragms don't do the job although all i've got to fit is a pattern diaphragm believe it or not but these are a better quality one than some of the rubbish that you get out there diaphragm on first onto the tank and then the gasket follows drop the screws back in it was running a bit slow this as well so i'm going to speed the um tick over up a little bit as well this one hasn't got the uh double spring set up what most of these brigs have this is an earlier engine so i'm gonna have to just uh make a little bit of an alteration by bending something i thought i might as well do it It'd be nice to get it running and i think i've got a grass box for it in the uh, poly tunnel as well so uh we could be bringing this into action because my one's just about had it and my one needs definitely looking at my one i've had for about 16 years oh, no sorry more than that about 18 years just after we moved into this house okay so <clears throat> we fitted that new one now okay so we've done that there's our fuel going in as you can see no problem there and to increase the speed of it what i've actually done this spring this i say this has normally got a cable operated handle or speed control most people bend that lever down to lock it in position. It is in the fast position, but it hasn't got the second spring there, the governor spring there, as you can see, it only relies on this one spring there. And what I've done, I've taken it out of there and I've just hooked it underneath there onto that screw there. Should give me hopefully a little bit more tension on the spring. So let's try that. We'll just drop that back on there like that. Right, let's try that, see if that's cured the hunting. Right, let's put that down there. Like that. Just give it a few more squirts. One, two, three, four. That'll do. Right, that's two eye. That's two eye, isn't it? If I move that back that way, try that. Right, that's too high. Right, there was a second hole under there. So I've put the spring on the second hole. Let's try this. Ah, there we go. A little bit of tinkering needed. Old gaskets and... Uh, diaphragms and rubber parts that have perished or gone hard again that's what caused the issue and i got it running up to speed by just altering that spring as i say there was another hole just behind there anyway that's the worst lawnmower in the world i think we'll start losing it now we've got to um, dig out a grass box for it i've got one in the poly tunnel i think so uh, this will be out for next season thanks very much i hope you've enjoyed this see you later bye for now